Have you ever wanted to get into the Ivy League? Have you dreamed of the successful life you'd have if you did so? Have you watched hundreds of thousands of videos trying to find an answer to the age old question of, how do I get in? And never found one? Well, sit back, relax, and take it all in. Because you're about to learn how to do just that here today. Before we get there, let me tell you a quick story. It all started the spring of my senior year of high school. On a cool spring day in late March of 2018, I awaited the results of my Princeton, Harvard, Stanford, and Yale applications. Seconds turned to minutes as time slowed down to a near stop in the hours leading up to the dreaded application release time. After what felt like five years later, it was finally 7 p.m. I took a breath and opened up the application portal. My heart was racing as I anticipated the result. Would it be an acceptance? A rejection? What would the outcome of this decision be? The page loaded. Time slowed to a stop. I took another breath and clicked on the decision portion of the portal. Everything seemed to move in slow motion as this page loaded. One second. Two seconds. Three seconds, four. It finally loaded. And almost immediately I saw a word that caught my eye and ultimately changed my life forever. Congratulations. I got into Princeton, Harvard, Stanford, and Yale in the spring of my senior year of high school. And if you're interested in the full story, head over to this video to learn some more about that. But in a nutshell, after I got into Princeton, I started working with a number of students and parents to help them get in as well. As I worked with and coached more students, I started picking up on a particular trend. The students I worked with who ended up going to Princeton, Harvard, Stanford, and Yale, my friends at the universities, and other people I knew who were students there, tended to have some things in common. Curious, I looked into this further researching different YouTube videos to see if my observations were on the right track. And just like I thought, people who accept into certain schools like Princeton, Harvard, Stanford, and Yale tended to fall into certain archetypes, certain groups, and those who actually made it into the universities needed to have similarities in their application and how they went about getting into these types of schools. And that leads me right into this. If you haven't watched this video here, I suggest you pause here, watch it, then come back to this video to get a background on the different types of schools and the types of students each school tends to accept. However, as a quick refresher, the different school types are Humanities Havens, schools that specialize in the humanities and tend to accept students interested in those fields. Technology Towns, schools who specialize in the STEM fields and tend to accept students who are interested in STEM as well. Political Science Paradises, schools who specialize in politics and the social sciences and tend to accept students who are interested in those fields. And finally, Business Boroughs, schools who are dedicated to their business schools and accept students interested in business and the finance spaces. Similar to that on the student side, the five common student types are the STEM Scholar, a student whose resume is peppered and colored by their passion for and participation in the STEM fields. The Humanities Intellectual, a student whose extracurricular experience in high school is dominated by their experiences in the humanities. The Sharp Social Scientist, a student obsessed with the social sciences and spends a lot of their time exploring that passion. The Professional Polymath, the student who's interested in a number of different subjects and extracurriculars and does them all very well. And then finally, the Athletic Academic, an athletic student whose resume is mostly composed of their athletic achievements and accomplishments. Now Stanford is a technology town, so the advice given in this video will be the best advice any student should apply if they hope to get into not only Stanford, but similar schools like it as well. With all that being said, here's the strategy and advice each type of student can use to get into a school like Stanford.
We're going to look at what it takes for each archetype of student to get into a school like Stanford and what they would need to do each year, starting from their freshman year, going all the way to the winter of their senior year, to have the best chance of getting in. Professional polymaths, unlike every other type of student, get a substantial boost irrespective of the school they apply to. In the case of Stanford, they on average get a whopping 5.13 multiplier on their odds of making it into the school, which increased their odds from 5.2% to an incredible 26.7%. This is a very significant increase in terms of their odds of making it into the school. In other words, their odds jump from about a 1 in 19 chance of making it into Stanford to about a 1 in 4 chance of making it into the school. With these increased odds, however, comes a much more difficult but effective path of getting into a school like Stanford. Now let's take a look at what a person needs to do starting from their freshman year, to be that one person out of four who does in fact make it into Stanford. You can feel the cool summer breeze on your skin as you count down the final days of summer. It's the summer before your freshman year, and while you don't want summer to end, you're excited to begin high school and start a new journey. As I mentioned before when discussing sharp social scientists and humanities intellectuals, freshman year is where the college race truly begins. The actions you take your freshman year will compound and give you a much better chance of getting into the school of your dreams, or will make those dreams much harder to achieve. This year, for all students, is about exploration. Except for the professional polymath, this exploration has to be purposeful. So unlike other students who have at least their freshman year and some of their sophomore year to explore and figure things out they don't like, as well as what they do like, a professional polymath needs to figure all this out by the end of their freshman year. This means that as a professional polymath, you should stay open-minded about the different classes you're taking to see which, if any, you find interesting. However, you need to make sure you have a wide selection of classes and clubs under your belt to build from moving forward in your high school career. For professional polymath, the questions they need to answer aren't so much, do I find this interesting or not? But instead, it's can I put in the necessary time and effort to excel at this class or club? Some important questions you want to answer during this time are, one, which fields do I find interesting enough to build on in my high school career? Can I diversify these fields? Two, which sports will interest me enough into committing to them for a full season for a number of years in order to make a varsity position and qualify for a leadership role? Figuring these two things out at this point in your high school career will give you a massive leg up over the competition and place you in a phenomenal position to succeed later on. Now fast forward to the summer after your freshman year is over. When you're a little clear about what you want to do, you know that you don't like humanities as much as the social and natural sciences. You decide to stick with soccer for the duration of your time at high school. On top of that, you sign up for Science Olympiad, DECA, Chess Club, as well as History Bowl and Poetry Club. With all that down, you head into your sophomore year. Now you're a sophomore. You're not a newbie anymore. You're not quite a veteran of the school, but you know your way around and are familiar with how the school works. You're friendly with some of the teachers at the school and have a much better idea of your place in the school environment. This year, however, things are getting even more serious. You figured out that you don't like math and science more than the humanities and social sciences and decide to focus mostly on that. The benefit of being a professional polymath is that although your course load is more varied than most other students, you have a lot more room and time to figure out exactly what you want in a particular combination of courses and extracurriculars that work for you. You can try your hand at a number of different STEM, humanities, and social science classes and clubs figuring out what you want and what you don't want so that you're in a much better position and have a much clearer idea of where you're going by the end of your junior year. As a professional polymath, there are three critical questions a student needs to ask themselves for the end of this year. One. 
Are there any clubs or extracurriculars which I can attain a leadership position in by the end of my junior year? Two, what part of my resume, clubs, classes, and athletics should I dedicate more time to in order to have all of them be at an elite level? Three, which AP classes would I be comfortable taking my junior year in addition to my other clubs and activities? Answering these three questions will set a student up for massive success when they truly start the college application process in their summer of their junior year. With the benefit of an increased chance of getting into college comes the downside of always having a completely packed schedule. As a professional polymath, one needs to go over and above to manage all parts of their high school career to put themselves in the best position to succeed. Now here's where things get interesting. While most students take their first SAT in the spring of their junior year, and that's what we recommend they do, for the professional polymath, we recommend that they start studying the summer after their sophomore year with the expectation of taking their first one in the fall or winter of their junior year, with the second one being the winter or spring of their junior year or the summer afterward. By getting their first SAT out of the way earlier, they have the opportunity to focus on the other parts of their resume they need to improve upon, such as their core classes and their GPA. With this in mind, we enter junior year. Now out of all years in their high school career, the junior year of a professional polymath's high school career is the most important. During this year, they have a number of questions to answer, things to complete, and places to go to for the start of their senior year. During this year, we advise that all students applying to schools of an elite caliber like Stanford take AP level classes in a number of fields if possible. For a professional polymath, courses like AP Calculus, AB or BC, AP Chemistry, AP Biology, AP United States History, AP Literature, and AP Language and Composition are all academic coursework this type of student should take to show their versatility and multivaried skill set in their academic resume. And as mentioned before, students who are especially of this archetype need to focus heavily on securing leadership positions in the extracurriculars they are participating in. This leadership aspect, combined with the academic versatility and prowess, is what separates a professional polymath who makes it into a school like Stanford from those who do not. Now let's fast forward to the spring of your junior year. At this point, you're rounding the corner headed towards the final destination, the winter of your senior year. During this time, a student should set themselves up early so that they're in a good position to be off to the races once they start their applications in the fall. Just like for humanities, intellectual, and social scientists, this entails asking for recommendations from teachers you want early, usually in the spring of your junior year, touring the schools you're interested in that spring or summer before your senior year, and taking the SAT at least two times before the end of the summer after your junior year, and starting the process of writing the initial draft of your common application essays. With all this in place, we can fast forward to summer after your junior year where everything is taken into account. This summer is the most important summer for every single type of student, and this is no different for the professional polymath. Your goal for this summer is to finalize your application essays and do extensive research on the schools you're looking to apply to. By doing this, you'll be in a fantastic position to capitalize on the thing that'll be key for you getting to Stanford, early admission. As mentioned before, I could do an entire video speaking on this point in time in the student's application alone. But what matters is that you complete as much as possible of your application to these various schools, or at least set yourself up to do so, before the autumn of your senior year. Now finally, we enter the autumn of your senior year of high school. Here's where we can go into nitty gritty as it relates to specific strategy when applying to Stanford as a professional polymath. Now it's finally the autumn of your senior year of high school, the time when everything you did in the previous three years of your high school career comes into play. Before this point, everything you did was simply set up to help put you in the position to get into Stanford. Now let's talk about how you'll actually get it. First thing you want to do is apply early. I cannot stress this enough, but students who apply early, especially those who are among the top level applications to a given school, get a tremendous boost in terms of their odds of making it into the school they want. Let me explain how. Looking online, 
the accepted early application rate for Stanford hovers right around 9%. Now, do you know what the regular application acceptance rate is? Less than 2%. For a professional polymath who applies early, these numbers are as high as 40, 50, or even 60% in some cases. These two wildly differing numbers is why a student who's interested in going to an Ivy League school needs to apply early to that school. They get a substantial increase in their odds of getting in because there are simply fewer people applying and thus more of a chance to wow an admission officer and claim those critical yes spots early. The next thing all professional polymaths should do if they want to be the one out of four professional polymaths who apply to Stanford and get in is highlight their leadership ability. This is critical. Professional polymaths are students who have a number of skills and talents in a number of different areas. The problem with having a number of skills and talents is that sometimes it can leave a student unable to connect with other students. This is a problem for a school that's trying to build a community of very skilled and talented people. Here's where leadership comes into play. Stanford is looking for people who can not only grow with the university and contribute back to it in some way, but they also want students who will be able to connect with, and if necessary, mentor other students to create a better community and environment for everyone involved. Here's where leadership comes into the picture. A professional polymath who is a leader shows the school that not only are they capable of doing incredible things, but they can also teach other students to do the same. This goes hand in hand with teamwork. Stanford wants to know that if a student is a part of a team, no matter what their position is within the team, they'll be a valuable member to the team and help it produce incredible results. Showing an ability to work well with others and have it yield successful outcomes in your past lets the school know that no matter what your role is in the community, you'll be a valuable addition to it. By demonstrating that you not only know how to lead, but also know how to follow, you give admission officers the green light they need to invite you into the community and give you that yes vote you're looking for. As mentioned before, culture is a critical and often overlooked part of students' application to a given school. Stanford's culture is one of innovation, discovery, and achievement. Demonstrating a desire to change the world helps a student show, in no uncertain terms, that they fit right into the Stanford culture. For the professional polymath, they have ample opportunities to demonstrate how, through their interests, they could have an impact on the world at large. For example, they could highlight their STEM interests and demonstrate some ways in which they could change the world for the better in that way. Or, they could highlight their humanities and social science interests and explain how they could change the world for the better in that way instead. They have ample space and room to truly express how, through their interests and activities, they can make the world a better place for everyone. As Stanford prides itself on being the school people go to to change the world, demonstrating the desire to change the world for the better will show them that you belong there. I could use an entire video breaking down this particular strategy even more, as there are a number of things a professional polymath could do to improve their application even further. If you'd like to see that, leave a comment below letting me know and I'll be sure to make a video diving even deeper into this particular topic. But in broad terms, the three steps to getting into Stanford are as follows. Step zero, set yourself up for success. This step is a step that gives you a fighting chance of being considered in the first place by a university like Stanford and getting your foot in the door, so to speak. This means that a student needs to have taken and done fairly well on the SAT, taken a few, if not more, STEM, humanities, and social science-based AP tests and scored well on them, and also participate in eye-catching clubs and extracurriculars that'll make them stand out long before they ever start to apply to college. This step is the most important step and helps put a student in a good position for the following steps. Step one, apply early. This applies to all students who want to get into a particular school in the Ivy League. If you have a dream school in mind that you'd like to go to, make sure you apply early to that school. There are a number of different benefits that come from applying early, but the main one is that your odds of getting into school like Princeton, Harvard, Stanford, etc. can increase by five, six, or even sevenfold by simply applying early. Every student should capitalize on this advantage by putting themselves in a position to apply early with a stellar application. Step two, highlight leadership and teamwork ability. Stanford, 
Like all elite schools, is looking to create a community of exceptional people who work well with other exceptional people. Demonstrating that you can work well with others in both a leadership role or a following role demonstrates to the school that you would fit right into the community and culture with ease. Step three, highlight your desire to change the world. This last step is the cherry on top of a professional polymaths college application. It's what takes a good application and makes it truly extraordinary. The reason for this is because, as mentioned before, culture is critical when applying to college. And most times, a school's culture is overlooked when students apply to a given school. Thus, finding a student who very clearly fits into the school culture will be a breath of fresh air for admissions officers and will give them the reassurance they need to put your application into the accepted pile. If you're a professional polymath, following those three, four including step zero, will give you a substantial increase in your odds of getting into Stanford. While this video did go somewhat in depth into this topic, I recommend taking a look at some of the helpful links in the description box below as it contains helpful material that goes much deeper into this topic than I could do so here. If you'd like me to make a video diving even deeper into these subjects and the steps and strategies for this type of student, just leave a comment below letting me know and I'll be sure to make one. Now let's move on to the athletic academic. Thank you for watching the video. I appreciate all the likes, shares, subscriptions, support, everything. If you'd like to see another video or another school or a different student type in a different environment, just comment it down below and I'll be sure to do that. If you haven't seen the full video, just head to the first link in the description box below. It should be there. Or wait 30 seconds till the end of this bit and you can click on the card to the full video or the card to the playlist that covers everything related to getting to Stanford for all the different student types. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you soon with another video.